Hello, you're watching of New X, and today let's talk about the drama "爱的二八定律 She and Her Perfect Husband. This is a 40 episode web contemporary drama that has started airing on November the 14th on the platform Tencent. It is directed by Lin Yan, written by Zhu Li, and led by Yang Mi and Xu Kai. The drama was mostly filmed in the city Shanghai back in 2021, from February to June. So far, the drama has aired ten episodes. Based on those episodes, I'll give it a one point five rating. Let me quickly introduce you to the story first, and then we're gonna talk about why I give it such a rating, the good and bad, and a couple of other things that's actually not that directly related to the drama, but I observe and I'm not feeling very happy about. First thing. Quick introduction to the story. As it is set in metropolis contemporary Shanghai, it features our two main characters, female lead played by Yang Mi Qing Shi. She is a lawyer in a very big law firm, trying to get to the partner's position. And she is shortlisted, but she has many competitors in this particular law firm. As the story sets it up, they have this weird rule about if you are a female lawyer, kind of in your thirties, you have to be married. If you're single, there's no hope for your promotion. Then our male lead, played by Xu Kai, Yang Hua, graduated from marketing, finance, that kind of school, and he's very good with numbers. He's a trading sort of genius, but he had a big failure、uh, working many years ago doing trading, and so he quit the job and became a very locked down. In his room and in his home, person reducing his living cost and needs to the minimum and living in a parent's house, doing stock market trading on his own to get actually good income every year, but kind of completely cut himself off with any social communication. Our female lead is not married; she wants her promotion, so. She told a lie to everybody at her firm, saying she's already married. She's even got a two-year-old. Kid, and then she randomly grabbed somebody she thinks looks good on the internet and photoshopped him, which happens to be Xu Kai's role, into a photo, put it on her desk in her law firm, and just tells everybody that this is my husband. And what's gonna happen? They're gonna meet in real life. And this whole lie that the female lead has been telling people is on the brink of breaking. And that would also bring in. Our romantic story, where these two people actually ended up together. That's the outline of how the whole thing is set up and is likely to go. Now, let's get down to the details. First, on the positive end, number one, contemporary drama or original voice, and this is the first time in my memory of the male lead actor Xu Kai using his own voice in any drama. He has been in many dramas, mostly period dramas, fantasy dramas, even Ming Guo setting dramas. Every role he's done before has been dubbed by somebody else. Is he a good line deliver? No. <laughs> his Mandarin is very heavily accented, but. It's so much better that he used his own voice. One thing being, this is a contemporary drama. If you hear everybody using their own voice, but only he gets dubbed, he would not fit into the whole story. Because I previously never heard him speaking with his own voice. This time I did. It actually works so much better. It makes me feel like he's a real person on screen. It's like I have to hear somebody's voice coming out of their actual vocal cord to be able to have this impression to recognize them as a living person. Otherwise, they are just. As flat as characters on paper, written two-dimensional. I can never quite feel them. If this is a period drama, it wouldn't work because his line delivery is 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 not good enough. Okay, it's the Wang Hedi type of situation. If he uses his own voice as Dongfang Qingcang, it wouldn't have worked. But thankfully, this is a contemporary drama. It's not so problematic, and they actually. Really fits his character the way the lazy and relaxed way of him speaking with that accent. Number two, this is actually a really, really funny drama. I'm gonna talk about the negative things in the second part, but if we put that aside for now, just to say, go with the setting, go with the characters, go with what the story tells you they are and how their relationship develops. <laughs> It's really funny. It has many kind of in your expectation, but you can't quite see how it's gonna play out. And when it plays out, it's filled with details, interesting engagement of people sitting in the same space, in a way, coerce each other into you know doing what they want them to do. All those little details that goes on in this drama are very engaging and funny to watch. And when you see an epic shit moment is coming, you're actually excited as an audience. You see, ah, You know, like how these characters are gonna resolve this epically dramatic situation, and it just happens to depict a couple of scenes that I've actually seen in real life 
happening to people I know. I was stomping on the ground when I showed up. There's a close girlfriend of our female lead character who is also her sister-in-law. So this lady is her good friend, but also married her one of her two brothers. That actress had this one scene when she got drunk and started to basically break down and crying. I happen to know somebody in my life many years ago who did exactly that. She vomited so much that she projectile vomited behind my back. I still remember what it smells like. And then she got so breaking down crying for over an hour and a half. And I secretly filmed her solid, continuous, non breaking 20 minutes of her going crazy crying. It's still on my phone. I'm gonna keep it forever. And it's exactly the same. When I saw that happening on screen, I'm like, ah, ah, ah. it's like my life got realized on screen. So these things just made me really happy watching this drama. I didn't expect there's gonna be that much laughter, that much <laughs> entertainment, basically. The third thing I like about it is. I know, as the female lead actress, Yami in this drama, she is in many ways and, and most of the time playing herself. Or this character has a lot of quality that's actually very similar to Yami herself in life. So that <laughs> if you watch a lot of uh, her variety show programs previously, you almost see like a 70 to 80% of herself in the character. You can say in a way that is a lazy way for an actor or actress to play because they wouldn't need to really work that much on it. They kind of just let the natural self come out for most of the time and it's enough. But actually, I also enjoyed it quite a lot. She is very, very relaxed when she plays a contemporary role. We've recently just seen a doctor drama. This Rao is even closer to what Yang Mi really is like. There's a lot of little details of her acting in this drama, much, much more, again, compared to her fantasy goddess roles that just doesn't link to any believability. In this drama, she's actually believable, given that you don't think about the logic of some of the settings of the drama. That's totally on the writing side of the story. So overall, this is not the greatest contemporary drama. It's definitely not gonna get any awards that I can think of. And it probably wouldn't have a very high rating either. But I have to admit, while it was airing, it was the most anticipated drama for me every day to click it open. The other one is The New Life Begins, right? Well, I was watching like five dramas at the same time. These two are the ones I'd pick first for the day. I just want to see how much more drama you're going to throw at me and how many more ridiculous scenarios the characters are heading into. So these are the positive things. Now, what is not <laughs> good about this drama? Mostly is because it's a super floating, completely disconnected <laughs> to reality setting drama. I would call this as a metropolis fairy tale story. From second one, when you see how they depict the law firm, the people who work there, their dress code, the interior design. And then you see how all the lawyers, what they're doing day in, day out. It doesn't look like a law firm at all. The lady lawyers dress so over the toply like rich businessmen's super rich wives. You never really see them doing much of a lawyer's work, which usually involves a lot of desk work, a lot of paperwork, stuck in front of a computer, going through piles and piles of files over time, you know, not going home at night. You almost don't see any of that. <laughs> you see them going to yoga classes. You see them going to banquets, multiple banquets, going to all kinds of events and just looking perfect. No, the hair, the makeup, the lipstick, the gowns. I believe actual lawyers work like that in China. So it's super disconnected. Even interior design of that law firm, it looks more like a vintage fashion brand or makeup company instead of, you know, like a law firm if you don't buy into it. It's a ridiculous drama to you. So built upon this ridiculous premise, you have the female lead doing that whole lying to everybody that this is my husband. Honestly, that's never gonna work in reality. And you've worked in this firm for years and still people haven't really suspected. Like they've never seen your husband. It's only a photo. So these are the good and bad. I've told you, you can decide whether this is your type of drama or you want to venture into it. Now, 
the third part of this video. So this drama literally has only been on air for four days. Already you see a lot of reviewers on China, mostly on Bilibili, but they would put their videos out on other platforms as well, have started talking about this drama. They are all very negative. That's one thing. The second thing is I found, although they have their different ways of doing it, they all have same points. It's like the bulletin points they're gonna mention in their video ranting about this drama are all the same. It just moves around in different orders. And it's too similar. That I cannot believe it's spontaneously happening from individuals. I've seen multiple bigger accounts of Chinese reviewers who would use this specific term of comparing Yang Mi's role in this drama as the female version of Zhang Han's role in Dong Ba Chu, which just got pulled down from China's internet and had a huge renting sort of <laughs> episode in Chinese drama land. It's not just one person who mentions it, okay? It's multiple people. They all pick this very specific thing. That just like make my antenna go up and it just doesn't feel right. It feels like there's a very clear plotted out angle and plan of attack that's been coordinated by one person or one organization and they are totally doing it just to target <laughs> young me. I mean, they would rant a little bit about Xu Kai's acting being boring and his line delivery being bad. I mean, everybody can see that. And that's not so essential because since day one of his acting in Andromedland, these are a couple of things people rant about him. The other thing is he cannot control his body weight. <laughs> just basically single her out and then using the same kind of way to say that it's too specific. Also, there are other people who would criticize her for, because this drama has very little filter, they're using very <laughs> controlled way of skin smoothing and making people look super young. And there's also this tack on her saying that she's sagging, you know, her skin condition is not good enough and she's crazy, her character is despicable. And then that gets like pulled onto her, basically saying her as a person is, you know, this and that. And it's basically calling you an ug ugly bitch, but not in such a, <laughs> you know, like direct way. Now, if you don't know, in Dramalin, she is right now cutting the ties she had with the company that she founded with other people for the last how many years? And you know that company that has produced all those dramas before. And she's now looking for the next one. Either she does it herself or she would have to find a big agency to take her. So she is right now in her career limbo. I wouldn't be surprised if there would be people who would take this opportunity, right, to, I mean, this drama land and it's entertainment business and this type of <laughs> doing it on somebody is not day one, it's not news. It's going on all the time in drama land. And if you're a big player and you've climbed to the top of this industry, you definitely have experienced episodes of this type of thing happening to you. And it's not saying that you haven't done it to other people either. It's like a whole mess sort of business and nobody is morally superior to others and probably it's all muddled up. But still, I really hate this type of thing going on. I remember earlier June when Tencent was airing Dream of Splendor, that huge wave of hate of this drama, picking out a couple of things they think it's behind time. And I would agree, some of the ideas that you can see it in the drama is questionable, but I would blame that mostly on the scriptwriter. And the scriptwriter happens to be somebody who is... <laughs> yeah. But if you look at public opinion, there's so many people in that game who are basically adding fuel to the fire and directing it to target the leading actress, hardly anyone else, like not the guy, nor the other girls, just, just concentrate all the fire and shoot all the bullets at her. It's basically repeating that, right? But this time it's on Yao Mi and on a different drama. And I mean, they can always find angles and they usually go and find angles that's to do with morality. You know, whether it's Liu Yifei's role being the, <laughs> in those people's opinion, she is a gold digger. She only loves the guy because the guy has that high official status. And she even like gives up her father's sort of this whole my father died because of your father situation and she totally doesn't care. She just wants to marry this, this guy who has that status because she can elevate herself. So that whole angle of attacking her character in that way and then putting that on the actress and saying everybody who likes the drama or likes the actress because of her role is morally as corrupted as this character is. That's the angle that we see in June when people go crazy, basically, on China's internet. I get 
private messages even till today with people telling me oh how dare you like a dream of splendor that kind of backward thinking drama they're like morality police of internet they will feel so superior to you that they would send you private messages before they block you <laughs> <laughs> you know, my life is very, very jing tai, okay? So this time, it's on a contemporary drama, it's led by Yang Mi, but you see the totally same way of doing it. First, question the morality of that role, which has nothing to do with the freaking actress. If you want to blame, blame the production company, blame the people who write it, right? But they don't care. They would all just direct the bullets at the actress and then start to bring up every... <laughs> previous memes people have made up for her. Personally, I'm not a fan of either Liu Yifei or Yang Mi. I don't think they're the greatest actress out there. I don't speak for them, you know. They don't pay me. But I just don't like the thing that people do to whoever individual that is out there for whatever gain they can get out of this whole thing. Whether they're paid with money, whether they are promised with others of benefits from other directions, or whether they're just doing it because they know doing it this way would get them most traffic. It stirs up the negative emotions of people will give you more traffic. You know, everything is peaceful and rainbow and happy. You're never gonna get any followings and likes. But if you say something that is outrageous, wow, well, you're gonna get a lot of clicks. Some of those big accounts in China that I follow, I follow them for a long time. And a lot of them started their renting or their drama review business after I did. Like they were later comers of the game, but they got really successful on China's platform. So there are a couple of accounts. I literally saw them starting with a couple of thousand followers and now growing to close to million or even over a million. You'd hope that they can still be authentic to themselves. But when you see this type of coordinated thing happen, sometimes you feel at which point along the way over the last couple of years when they're doing this, did that voice of their channel still talking is the same, but the person behind it has changed or they have been incorporated. <laughs> In a way, I want to naively believe these people are still individuals, but I do know some of those accounts are too big to be individual anymore. They hire other people, they have a company, they have people to feed, and they need to think about money. Uh -huh. I am like saddened in multiple ways. One is I don't like seeing this type of things being played out in entertainment. It's a fucked up industry already and it's messy already. We don't need more drama, but people keep doing that for whatever benefit. The other thing is, yeah, you see a lot of reviewers get involved in this. It happens all the time. It's just sometimes you notice it, sometimes you don't. But when it happens and when you notice it, it's just like bad taste. This is an unusual drama in the sense that when I was watching it myself without knowing any background stories, without actually looking at anybody's stuff, I just day one the drama airs, I jumped into it and finished all the, I think first six episodes it released on that day and I really, really had fun. It's like my logical brain is like, yeah, this is so not realistic setup, but oh, this is so fun. Let's see what's gonna happen. I never felt the need to hold up the morality flag and get super alert at all the movements of the characters in the drama. Oh, she did this, she's a bad person. And then this is horrendous. How dare anybody write that? <laughs> yeah, you know, the whole committing fraud and then grabbing a stranger and kiss them in their mouth in public when they don't even know you. Is that sexual harassment? Yeah, sure. But I am not the mother of the character, you know, I am not responsible for their questionable deeds. And then also, no one is perfect. If they've done something questionable as a character, well, it's a drama. <laughs> you're watching for it, you know, if you're trying to get everybody being perfect to be qualified as the lead, well, it's gonna be a very boring drama. I don't think it's such a problematic drama. It definitely is not as bad as a lot of reviewers make it out to be. And I definitely see this intentional on this drama that I just don't like seeing. And then for the rest of the drama, I think the plot is gonna go to the point where our female lead couldn't stand her company and she's gonna quit and she's gonna start her own company with her previous enemy within the company who is competitor against her. But they kind of came together together and formed their own company, own law firm to fight against their previous bosses and all that ridiculous stuff. So could be quite funny later in this drama, we shall see. I had a lot of fun, so I'm gonna keep having it. And I shared quite a lot of uh, observation I've had that is actually beyond the drama itself that's going on in the chattering of things around it. Often, stuff outside dramas are more exciting than the dramas themselves. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Fortunate or unfortunate? That should be the end of the first impression from Avenue X talking about the drama Ai Da Ba Ding Lui, she and her perfect husband.
and let YouTube decide <laughs> by its own algorithm what it wants to suggest to you. Thank you for watching. I'm your ex. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.